Hi, I'm Ben Wadilla. Today on Saturday Mechanic, we're going to talk about ignition system basics. When you turn your car on, you flick a switch and it just turns on. But there's a lot more to it than that. You set to motion your starter, you fire up a lot of transistors and relays, you start up your ignition system. The ignition system is the one that's kind of hard to understand, really. And today, we're going to walk through the various generations of how these ignition systems came to be, how they worked, and the theory behind them. It makes understanding how engines work a lot easier. So we start with the battery. Uh, on modern cars, it's 12 volts. Easy enough. And that's the difference between the positive and the negative poles. If we hook up a switch, just like this one, a nice simple toggle, that's an easy idea to hold on to, on and off, right? That's more or less what you do when you turn on your ignition. You turn an on and off switch that lets the positive on this side flow into the ignition system. Otherwise, it's, everything is off. So if I turn this on, I've gone from having 12 volts here, and it ends here, to having 12 volts all the way through all this detrius on the table. But what is this stuff? This is more or less the original ignition system. There are three primary parts to it. This is the coil, it's basically a transformer. This is the distributor. It's got a couple of jobs, and this is the distributor cap. Its job is to transfer power from the coil to the spark plug. So what do each one of them do? Well, the coil, like I said, is a transformer. Same kind of idea as the transformers hanging on the telephone poles next to your house, except for where those step high voltage down to house voltage, this steps 12 volt, up to high voltage, something like 10 to 30,000 volts, depending on the coil that you're using. It does that with a series of windings, primary and secondary. The primary winding is a thicker gauge wire, and that winds down into the, into the body of the coil. And then you've got the secondary winding, and that's very fine wire that's got a whole lot more windings in it. And the effect is to induce a magnetic field. That magnetic field has a pole running right down the middle that comes out here, the ground of that piece of steel or whatever it is. And when you've got voltage running through those windings, that magnetic field is intensified in that post. So when that magnetic field collapses, that extra voltage, the high voltage in that post needs to go somewhere and that's gonna go into your spark plug. But in order to do that, the field needs to be switched on and off. So how do you collapse that field? You do that with this distributor. If I take this piece off and show you the insides of this thing, what we have here is a set of points, and that is basically a mechanical switch. So this piece down here hooks up to the camshaft and runs at camshaft speed, in order, because the camshaft basically tells us where all the cylinders are. And there's a little set of lobes on the end of this shaft. And as the shaft rotates, it opens and closes these points right here. So as this turns, the switch opens and that induces a spark. This is also a secondary distribution device. This is called the rotor armature. Since we've got a spark built up in here that needs to go somewhere, we're going to distribute it to the cylinder that needs it the most, the one that's nearest top dead center. So here we've got a spring-loaded graphite shaft and that conducts current, and it touches this piece here in the middle of the rotor. That rotor has an armature on it, and that armature contacts each one of these copper posts down in here. And those copper posts all correspond to their individual spark plug. So as this thing's rotating, the field is building up in the coil and collapsing, building up and collapsing. So you're getting spark, 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 and that spark needs to go somewhere and this distributor cap is how it happens. So we put it all together and we turn our circuit on. We should get a spark, just like that. Bah! I'm just kidding. Boy, I can feel that in my hair, though. With that uh, sort of moved out of the way, let's move on to the next generation of ignition systems. So this is a much more modern engine. This is out of a Toyota. From the outside, it looks very similar to what we just talked about on the bench. You've got your coil, and that feeds the center to the distributor. But the distributor, while it does pretty much the same thing, 
has much different insides. So here you can see the outside of the cap looks almost, well, it does look identical. It's got the center electrode and it's got the contacts on the outside. And this piece here rotates just like before and can translates the power coming in from the coil to the leads here that goes out to the spark plugs. But if I take this rotor out, we see something a lot different in here. Nothing, really. You see a gear and a couple of pieces of plastic. That's the important part. This is actually uh, sort of a timing wheel, and this is at the end of the camshaft, the camshaft that controls the valves. This tells us exactly where all the pistons are in their respective uh, cycle. So we have two sensors up here. These are the camshaft position sensors. And this sensor here detects the presence of these teeth on this wheel. So the signals here are sent out to the computer and the computer decides exactly when to fire the coil and to fire each spark plug. So now that we've seen this one, this is the first sort of electronic ignition system. And you'll notice that we still have a mechanical component to it, that, that distributor rotor that was moving the spark from the remote coil into each plug. But if you think about it, it's electronically controlled. Why even bother with this distributor system? And that's sort of what happened in the last 10, 15 years. Automakers started moving away from this distributor system to a distributor-less system, uh, direct coil control. So you'd see maybe two, a coil controlling two spark plugs and they're electronically fired. Now what we're getting, the state of the art is called coil on plug, like this. Basically what this does is it condenses a coil here and this has got wires that come in to power it and it plugs in directly to the spark plug like this. So what happens, or well, the reason this is done is because it's super high control for the engine. It's all powered by the computer and it virtually guarantees no, no misfires, which is bad for the engine and bad for emissions. So that's pretty much it as far as ignition systems go. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them.